Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, yeah, before going into the presentation, I will quickly mention a bit of myself and the role that I am playing in the NFT, uh, sorry, in the Open Air Monitor project. So I studied biology in Colombia, where I am from. Then I moved into Germany, where I did my PhD under the supervision of Miguel Maecha, Mirko Miglevaca, uh, Christine Romerman, and Marcus Reinstein. Uh, last year, I had the opportunity to work in the NFDI for Earth project that is somehow similar to the Open Air Monitor project, but for Germany. Uh, since, yeah, since June, I am working in the Open Air Monitor project, uh, specifically in these three tasks, uh, integration and harmonization between in situ and graded data, uh, development of the European U Union land-based mitigation potential impact tool, and the task 6.10, develop a work carbon floods monitor. But today I will focus on the second one. So, <laughs> land surface characteristics as uh, reflectance, sorry, as uh, albedo and emissivity, uh, regulate the amount of solar radiation and long wave radiation that is absorbed by the land and remitted uh, to the atmosphere. On the other hand, the surface roughness affect the, um, it, um, the momentum, uh, the change uh, of turbulence, of turbul uh, sorry, the turbulence change of momentum, energy, and different um, biochemical components between the biosphere and the atmosphere. So we can agree that uh, because terrestrial ecosystems play a fundamental role in the regulation of climate regimes at local, regional, and global scales. So the question is how to estimate the effect of land use changes on biophysical variables. So to do this here, uh, I have a representation of a landscape with different uh, vegetation types. Of course, we can use uh, remote sensing information, in this case, for example, Sentinel-2, to estimate um, the percentage cover of each one of the vegetation types for a specific pixel. Then using other satellite mission, for example, Sentinel-3, we can estimate the land surface temperature or the albedo for each one of the pixels. Now the question is how we disentangle this information, how, how we can estimate the contribution of each one of the PFT classes into the signal. So uh, Duvelier and co-authors in 2018 developed the space for time technique where first you, have, you do of course a spatial resampling to have all the products in a, in, in a common uh, spatial space. Then using a local moving window <clears throat> that basically assumed that uh, in, this, in this small window, the, the climate regime is homogeneous, then you don't have other component factors affecting the signal. You uh, estimate the contribution of each one of the PFTs into, this, into the biophysical variable using a linear regression. And this is an example uh, for the same authors where here we have uh, the, 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 uh, the delta, the change of land surface temperature for different regions where uh, we see that an increase of uh, land surface temperature in the tropical regions uh, mainly produced by deforestation. So, uh, now, the, the technical problem is how to implement this technique uh, in, to process data. So uh, here we, we need to work with larger created data sets and data cubes uh, at the European level or a global level at high resolution. Of course, we need the speed because using this moving window uh, algorithm is uh, computationally expensive. And uh, we need something that is easy to parallelize at the same time that is easy to deploy no matter if you are using a laptop or a supercomputer. And of course, the idea will be that it's a high level programming language that is easy to understand and to modify if necessary. And that solves the two language problem. This is a problem, this is a technical problem where basically you prototype in a high level 
programming language and then deploy the solution in a low level programming language. And of course, we need that, that it is important that it's open source then everyone can read the code and be sure that is doing. So we went for Julia to do our implementation of the, uh, of the solution. That basically the motto is like write like uh, Python, run like C. And uh, we base our implementation in the JATS rate package that is also developed by some of their um, member of our institute that basically allow you to uh, use uh, apply uh, any function highly efficiently through different axes of a cube. So what is the current status of the implementation? Well, we create this JATS rate toolbox package that uh, has two modules. The first one is basic operations model, where yeah, you can do all the basics pre-processing the steps before applying the space for time. Technique, for example, aggregation time, filling time, uh, we still missing a proper interpolation, uh, plotting and masking. And then the second module is the spatial temporal analysis where we have uh, the space for time by the year in 2018. We also have the spatial temporal cross validation by Mayer in 2018. And we are looking to implement two more, the forward feature selection and the area of applicability of progress. Uh, we also provide some Jupyter notebooks and then people should be able to easily uh, understand the toolbox and how to use it. But uh, of course, what is next? Uh, as we are basing our package in the Jatsaris package, we have breaking changes in the in the backend, and we need to rewrite certain things. Uh, we are looking for a faster backend when using moving windows. Uh, that is going to be provided by the new discovery engine developed by Fabian Gans. Uh, we are still working in some minor improvements, for example, moving from Cholesky decomposition that sometimes can be numerically unstable for a more numerical stable QR decomposition. And of course, as we are using moving windows, the idea is that we have the same size of the, uh, the same area, no matter if we are working in the tropics or in high latitudes for this, uh, Daniel Loss is working in this discrete global grid system package. So please have a look if you are interested in that. Uh, the other important uh, element is that so far altitude has a, a huge impact in the analysis. So the idea will be to consider altitude as a confounding factor and use regularized regression or other machine learning te techniques to have it into account. Yeah, and we also need to update and reorganize the documentation. So for our main study case, we are working with Alexander, uh, Alexandra Sheskati at the GRC in Ispra. The idea is that they are implementing the European Union Forest Observatory. So we consider that this space for time toolbox will be uh, useful uh, to, to, to have into account in the European Union, yeah, in the observatory. And the idea is to quantify the climate impact of land use and land use changes. Uh, of course, to produce maps this, uh, of Europe, but also uh, make use of new geostationary satellites to see the impact through the... Uh, so, sorry, through the journal cycle. And finally, uh, maybe look into the commodities that have triggered forest degradation in other areas of the world and how this, uh, how this policy can be enforced by the European Union. As a, a size to the case, uh, we have two. The first one is by Chen Wei Xiao in our institute. He is using the technique to evaluate the effect of an ecosystem resistance at the at global scale. And Juliana Freitas from Hamburg University. 
She's working in the influence of land use changes and land cover changes uh, on the climate of the Himalayas. For to do this, she is running the or package in Levante supercomputer. So we are happy that the package is not only working in our cluster. Uh, yeah, we are looking forward for more interactions with other partners in the Open Air Monitor project. Thank you. Thank you so much, Daniel, for the brilliant presentation. Do we have any questions? Um, we have a lot of time for questions this time around. Anyone? Uh, it's very interesting for us, of course, we, uh, we run most of modeling in Python uh, using Cox. And one, one of the things that's relatively slow, of course, the most cost is, costly is the prediction, right? But we realize with the prediction, it's the read and write that kind of takes yeah. half of the time. But uh, what was two things that are very costly uh, in Python is the space-time overlay. Like if you have a million points and you want to match the space and time all the uh, rasters, so that was very costly. So I don't know if with your with your framework with the Julia and this uh, uh, Yak Sarai whatever, it it should help to to improve the uh, at least to get better speed computations. Also uh, in this package, uh, read and write it can be parallelized, so you can read an independent part of the cube. Mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, and also write. So yeah, for sure that that can represent an advantage. And the, the second thing is the hyper tuning. Sorry, Hy hyper tuning of models. Yes. Uh, so that's in scikit learn, right? And yes. It's really developed. I mean, it's really worked out. So you get it in a few lines. But in Julia, you probably have to start from scratch, right? Yes, uh, there is a new series of package by Christian Rakukas, I think. Uh, especially in, in these differential equations and how to, uh, to solve these uh, optimization problems really fast in Julia. So yeah, there are work being developed in that direction. Okay, thank you. Any other Yeah, you mentioned you want to move from Cholesky decomposition to QR, but I missed the point on why you actually need the decomposition and, and why. You... Yeah, sorry, this is part of the linear regression. Uh, there are cases as we are not we are not taking the uh, the PFT matrices uh, as itself, but we first apply a singular value decomposition mm -hmm. uh, because at the end you can express. Uh, the presence of sense minus one class. Uh, sometimes it can produce, uh, <laughs> let's say, not 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 a spec or, or uh, yeah, non-common values or non-common distributions that produce issues with the Cholesky decomposition during the linear regression. But I heard at least what I read from the blogs is that uh, they are working now in this QR decomposition. That for sure is uh, slower, is faster than in, in other programming languages. Yeah, so it's like a penalty of speed they are giving, um, but you gain a numerical, pre a numerical precision and uh, stability. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? Anyone from the audience? Has a question for? Um, I'd, I'd just like to ask if you already started doing some heavy computing, or it's just still in like testing period. Sorry, have Again? you started doing like some heavy? No, uh, heavy? we started developing the package last year as part of the NFDI for our project, but it's not complete yet. I mean, there are many things. Uh, yeah. There are many things that we need to, to incorporate and to program. So the, the idea is to do it in the next year during the open air monitor project. Okay, thank you.